We finally arrived. A personal device built specifically for local AI. Not a generic PC with AI bolted on, but a purpose-built beautiful machine that's supposed to be as comfortable on your desk as it is portable. I like the packaging. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. This is called the Olaris One. And you'll notice a striking resemblance to another piece of gear we already know. Let's see. The corner radius is a little bit off, but I like the form factor that it's a little bit stretched out. Pretty cool. What do we got in the back? Power button, Thunderbolt, HDMI, USB, and Ethernet. And we also get a power cable with an adapter. And it could sit on your desk, or maybe you don't need it on your desk at all. Imagine you're somewhere else out and about and you have Wi-Fi to some cafe, which is going at five gigabit per second. And you wanna use a new model that just dropped or that you've wanted to try out. But at five gigabit per second, you just don't know how long it's gonna take and how many cups of coffee you have to drink before it's downloaded. Probably a long time. And now you can download whatever model you want because it's gonna be downloading onto your Alaris box back at the office instead of where you are at the coffee shop. I'll explain in a minute. Now, first, a little bit about this thing. This packs the latest tech inside. We're talking Intel Core Ultra 9 275HX. Thunderbolt 5 is on board. Really good cooling, so it's nice and quiet. It basically has two fans like a Mac Mini has, but two of those. And all that so that it can host an NVIDIA RTX 5090 in there. Here we go. Let's turn this thing on. I should probably plug it in first. So I plugged it up, turned it on, but wait a minute, um, what's going on here? What, what is that? You don't use it like a mini PC with a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. This is a personal AI appliance. So you actually use it from any computer that you want. I can use it from the computer. I can use it from my phone. I can use it from an iPad. And that's where it's unique. I haven't seen anything like this and that's pretty exciting. Now we know we wanna get rid of cloud dependence for certain things, not for everything, but if you have privacy concerns if you want to process your data locally you own your data or you have a client that you don't want to share their data that's probably the biggest case for local ai you get to keep everything but you may have been watching this channel for a while we do a lot of tests with ai machines right but how do you access these from other machines you have to sit next to the computer and access these this one kind of solves it partially but to be able to access your ai tools from anywhere and i don't mean only on your network I mean, anywhere. You need to be able to configure your network, set up firewall rules, uh, or you can do something like tail scale, but still you need to be able to configure all those things. Olaris does everything for you and they're open sourced. So you can look at all their software and all their code in a GitHub repository right here. Number five repository of the day, GitHub Trending. This thing uses off the shelf and open source technologies, stacks them together for you like Kubernetes to handle all the management and orchestration. And finally, you have your own personal UI with a secure ID connection and multi-factor authentication. So you'll be able to get into your personal URL that's secured over a free HTTPS certificate that they install for you on the device. And if you connect to it with your phone, it actually comes with VPN support. So total security built in from the ground up. Now here's a desktop and you can go to the dashboard and you can take a look at the apps launcher, which looks pretty familiar to Mac OS users, I guess. Here's the dashboard. This shows you everything about your device. You can also access it through the app. Even if you're not on the same network as your machine, it's connected. It tells you what's using your GPU, CPU, memory, and so on. Another problem this thing solves is the setup process. Not only do you need to configure all what I mentioned before, but each time you want to do something new, like you want to do a large language models for text generation, if you want to do image generation, video generation, music generation, you need to be able to learn all those stacks and go to each one of those repositories. Well, this kind of changes the game because all you need to do is go to the market and install an app that does all that for you. So for example, if you want to do Olama, the old fashioned way would be to run this through a terminal. Now they have a UI as well, but here you can just say get and install. And now it's going to install Olama. I can do this either from this machine or I can do it from my phone. I can install any of these apps from anywhere and use them from anywhere. So let's get into some of the typical things that this thing can do for AI. Just as a quick aside here, it's not only AI. It's basically a home server. So you can install things like Jellyfin, kind of like a personal Netflix story of media on there because this thing comes with a two terabyte SSD and 96 gigabytes of memory too, by the way. So I've installed Olama. 
I'm also gonna grab Open Web UI. While it's installing, look at all these apps that are available. N8N is available, QBitTorrent, Home Assistant, some of the ones that you might be familiar with if you're doing home lab. And, and there's developer tools too. Studio, comprehensive developer tools for developing. Uh, dot, 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 okay? <laughs> it's it continues but let me know in the comments down below if you want me to go through any of these other developer tools there's also a developer tool section here because you can also develop applications for this platform pop open olama all the terminal commands work as they normally would olama list i don't have anything let's go with olama pull Gemma 3 latest. This is based on Ubuntu, by the way, this OS that they have here. And it's really fast and responsive and snappy. And look how that works. That works pretty much exactly the same way as Olama would work anywhere else. While it's going on, I'm going to get comfy UI as well. And I'm going to pop open open web UI. And it automatically detects that I already have Gemma installed. <laughs> on Olama and it just automatically sets it up. I don't need to configure anything. Hello. This is literally the easiest setup I've ever seen <laughs> for this work stack. Write a story. Look how fast that's going. This is using that 5090. That 5090 is the mobile version and it comes with 24 gigs of VRAM. We're talking about actual NVIDIA 5090 here. So it's going to be fast. You can run lots of models with that, but you won't be able to run larger models than that. Here's Quen Coda 30B, one of my favorite coding models. Open Web UI automatically updates, pop that open, and now I'm talking to my coder model. Write me some code. <laughs> I don't have any real prompts right now, sorry. <laughs> but you get the idea. Whoa, look how fast that's going. This is the 30 billion parameter model. That is nice. Comfy UI, install the app right through here, open it up and it's running. Now, normally with Comfy UI, you have to install packages depending on what workflow you want to do. So they provide this Comfy UI launcher where you can just install packages by clicking a couple of buttons. So here's Quen FP4 package, one for Flux, one for Context. Here's one 2.2 text to video. Looks like I already got that one. Here's one image to video view. I don't have these, so I'm going to click on get all and it just installs everything. <laughs> a laptop sitting in a dark room lit only by a candle and run Let's see how long that takes okay now this is creating a 1024 by 1024 image well that's done already okay i only see a candle i don't see a laptop <laughs> on a bright desk this is actually really fast so we can just do these over and over and over again and this is using the flux workflow there's a laptop new kind of apple product it's a moik pad moik pad come get your moik pad over here Let's try a video workflow. I'm gonna take a picture of myself next to my sign. All right, it's doing it. Hopefully this works because this is a video generation model and those take a little bit longer. Oh, what? It created a 3D plot of my picture? I didn't know that's what I was getting. I thought I was doing a video model, but <laughs> okay, that's cool. It's not exactly accurate, but it's still neat. All right, we've got ourselves a little video over here. Let's see what this is. It's five seconds long and it took like five minutes to make. Wow. <laughs> what? Whoa. <laughs> that is magic. I don't know what I'm saying. They should have audio too. Speaking of audio, here's a tool called Ace Step. It's a music generation model. This is going to be the first time I'm doing music generation locally. But the neat thing is it's downloading as fast as it can from my network here. Even though I still have two minutes left, I just want to get going with this thing, you know? And I'm downloading a lot of models, taking up all that valuable space from the two terabyte drive that's on there. The nice thing is I don't have to go hunting for these. I don't have to go to Hugging Face, find the right models, find out what they're called, match the names up, download them, then upload them to my tool. It pretty much happens automatically. If you do need to access things manually, you have access to all the files. There's a file manager right here. So here's AI folder. Here is Comfy UI. That's the thing we were just using. I'm going to have the models folder and here are all my Comfy UI models. I can just upload them here if I need to, download them from here if I need to. It's just that everything here is managed for you automatically, but you can, if you want to, do things manually too. <sighs> 40 seconds left. It's amazing the kind of things we become impatient at, right? Considering this is downloading a seven gigabyte file over the 
internet in a couple of minutes. I should be thankful. I've got some lyrics here generated by AI. I got some tags here. The songs can be as long as 240 seconds. All right, I'm not gonna change anything else. Generate. How long does it take to generate a song? Somewhere between an image and a video, right? I would guess. There it is. <laughs> Let's hear this. City lights blow like a progress bar. Midnight monitor glow the every avatar. Every prompt that I drop is the back end hard. Mobile in the trance, reading dreams like cards. Four at in and the fans still spin. Heat from the rack like a rig still spin. So bad. What happened to drums? My tag literally was drum and bass as the second one. You get the idea. It's gonna take some messing around with. But how easy was that? You know what they say about work. All work and no play makes Alex a dull boy. So there's a little fun section here too. By the way, you can think of this thing as not only your AI box, but it can do a lot of things as a server. It can even serve windows. But under fun, there's Steam Headless. Let me just go into full screen here and I can spin around in a circle. <laughs> it's running Doom, but there may be some issues here. I need to figure out how to move around. I am in a browser window after all. It's running on the Olera's box. I'm on my Mac. I'm sure we can figure it out. That is a 5090 in there after all. So it's capable of running a game like Doom. Now, another pretty unique thing about this box is that it has GPU modes. So there's a GPU there. You can share it however you like. Here are the options. App exclusive. So that means once the app starts using the GPU, all the resources of that GPU are available only for that app. Memory slicing will divide up the GPU memory into different apps, whoever is calling it. And then time slicing is there's a lineup of apps and they all want the GPU and they each get it, but they have to take turns. Now the Kickstarter page also lists all the specs, pricing compared to some of the other competitors, which is pretty cool. You get it right here. The Mac Studio M3 Ultra, M4 Max, Mac Minis, Beeling GTR 9 Pro, and the NVIDIA DGX Spark are all listed here. What their memory capacity is, what GPUs they have inside, what CPU storage, and everything is compared, making this a pretty compelling package for what you're getting for the price. They even give you some LLM inference numbers here. So there's that Quen 3 30 billion parameter model that I like to use. And look at the tokens per second here. Now I've tested the 5090 before on the channel. And yeah, it's quite a bit faster than everything else that I've tried because of that crazy memory bandwidth that's available on there to make things really, really fast. You can run VLLM on it because that works with NVIDIA GPUs. Olama, of course. And in all these examples, the Olaris One actually beats everything else, including the DGX Spark, which is the other NVIDIA product on this page with a slightly different architecture, still the black hole chip, but the memory in that is LPDDR5. Here, the memory is much faster, it's GDDR7. Here's GPT OSS 20 billion as an example. Olaris One using VLLM or Olama is much faster than everything else. Finally, Gemma 312 billion. Again, now they also show 120 billion, which is to say that they're not only showing things that make it look good. It has 24 gigs of VRAM, which will be limiting in certain circumstances, like this big model here. The M3 Ultra Mac Studio has a lot more memory. So does the GTR 9 Pro, and so does the NVIDIA DGX Spark. They all have over 96 gigabytes of memory available for the GPU, so they're gonna be able to run that model no problem, whereas the Olaris One will have to offload some of that model to the CPU processing, to the system memory and therefore it's gonna be a little bit slower, but it still runs it. It's nice to see that kind of transparency here. If you want more information on the Kickstarter, I'll link to it down below. It's not a cheap little device at three grand, but you have to consider that it has all the latest and greatest mini PC options in there, including a 5090, which there's no mini PCs that have a 5090. You're gonna need that two terabytes of storage also for all the models you're gonna wanna put on this thing. In the last few years, we've traded ownership for convenience, and some of those models that live in the cloud are pretty convenient, but we handed our data and AI workflows to a few giant cloud providers. Open source has really been flipping that script and Olaris takes it a step further by giving us this open source personal cloud that runs in your home. Your files, your models, and your AI agents will all stay on hardware you actually own. I hope they succeed in their Kickstarter. If you're interested, link down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.